Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Before we get started, I would like to wish all the Canadians a happy Thanksgiving weekend. It's a beautiful time of the year with the trees changing color and we're still getting some warm days here and there. My goal is not to gain five pounds this weekend eating turkey. I will definitely enjoy my time with family and friends and I hope you all do as well. So again, happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow Canadian members and viewers. If you've been enjoying my content, why not take a quick second to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you'll never miss out on the latest episode. And you'll be joining a community of like-minded individuals who share your interests. Let's keep this journey going together. Thank you for your support. Today I have four stories to share with you all. Two are from Reddit and the last two are from Phantom and Monsters website. I will leave a link below to their website so go check it out. If you have an encounter story that you would like to share, please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's episode. Okay, for this first one, the Reddit user's name is Q for Kiwi, and we're going to be headed to South Brazil. Long story short, about 17 years ago, we were driving back home from the mall. My mother was driving, my brother was in the passenger seat, and I was in the back seat. As we turned onto a very straight part of the road, all the street lights suddenly went out, but I didn't think much of it. As we were about midway through the road, I looked to the right towards a garage door that was illuminated and saw for two to three seconds something I cannot explain. I didn't see the legs, feet, or hands. This thing was completely gray and had an extremely muscular built. Had red eyes, no mouth, nose, or ears. It was crouched onto a garage door and had folded bat-like wings on its back. It was around 6 feet 5 inches tall, 2.5 meters, based on the garage door size. As soon as I saw the creature, it turned and we locked eyes, with a face expression like it knew me personally. As soon as I realized it was something out of this world, I stopped looking at it due to the extreme fear I got, so I couldn't get a better description. I used Photoshop and some Google pics that matched it to reconstruct it. This is what I saw. Now, I'm not crazy because my brother saw it too. The encounter was so traumatic that it is now engraved onto my brain. The only difference is that my brother saw more details than I did and he said it had chameleon-like eyes that shined red-orange. Anyone have any clue as to what we could have seen? A few years ago, I bought a 1955 Chevy Bel Air, two-tone sky blue with white four doors. It had a high nickel 350 small block, a Holley 600 carburetor, and a Hurst four-speed transmission. As a car enthusiast, I was in love with it. Despite my girlfriend at the time and even my mom calling it hideous, I had plans for it. A fresh paint job, reupholstered seats, and new rims with white wall tires. But as soon as it hit 28,587 miles, the odometer broke and stayed stuck on that number. About 10 days after I bought the car, strange things started to happen. For instance, I'd come home with all of the windows up, but by morning, one or all of the windows would be down. Then, there was the night I heard low rumble from the garage. When I checked, the car was idling, even though I knew I had turned it off earlier. Items like drinks, hats, and tools would disappear if I left them in the car overnight. One night, the horn once blared uncontrollably, forcing me to disconnect it to get some peace. 
There was one incident where the hood fell on my hand. I ended up needing seven stitches, but that might have been my fault, but other things felt more eerie. Like one time I was sitting in the car with, with a buddy, and when I started it, the radio began playing a song that directly tied into our conversation. It was unsettling. My girlfriend at the time had a best friend who was a medium, and she was terrified of that car. She refused to go near it. She said the car radiated a dark energy, something she couldn't fully explain. Whenever she visited, I had to park the car facing the wall because my garage had no door, and she'd swear it felt like I was watching her when I parked it facing outwards. The activities wasn't limited to the car either. After I got the Chevy, strange things started to happen in my house as well. Doors and cabinets would slam. I'd feel cold spots in heated rooms, and there were nights with knocking on the walls. Sometimes I'd even hear footsteps in the kitchen late at night. Eventually, a family friend who also is into classic cars had owned several Tri-5 Chevys. He offered me 10000 for the car. Since I only paid 8000 I took the offer. That was in September of 2021. After I sold the Bell Ear, the paranormal activities in my house calmed down. Although the house is over 100 years old and still haunted to some extent. But I can't shake the feeling that the car somehow amplified the hauntings. A few months ago, I was talking to the new owner. He had fully restored the Chevy, making it into the beauty I had always envisioned. He loves the car. But when I asked him if he noticed anything weird, he admitted that every now and then strange things happened. The oddest incident happened one morning while he was having coffee with his neighbor. His neighbor had asked him what he was doing out late the previous night. He says he caught a glimpse of the Bel Air driving down the road and returned about an hour later. The new owner thought hard and swore he hadn't left the house that night, let alone driven the car. For this next one, the date is unknown, uh, but the location is in New Mexico, located somewhere near a Navajo reservation. I have a friend who lives in a rural area near a Navajo reservation in New Mexico. She would hear tapping on her window and walking on her roof. One day, when I was over at her place, she went to sleep and I stayed awake. I started hearing the walking on the roof, and when it stopped, I started feeling uneasy and anxious for no reason, so I went outside to smoke. Her house is a one-floor small house on a farm that's in the middle of a forest and has a hammock 20 yards to the side of the house. I was laying down smoking when I heard some noises in the trees around the house. I started getting scared, so I called her dog, a German shepherd, at least to feel a bit safer. As soon as I called her dog's name, the noises instantly stopped, and Sky, the dog, started barking and ran to the back of the house as if she was chasing something. I didn't want to stay outside, as I thought it was some animal, so I started running after Sky in the woods. I chased her about 200 yards running into the woods. I could hear the thing running, but I never saw what it was. When I got to her, I grabbed her collar and had to pull her back to the house as she was scared and didn't want to come. When we were about 30 yards away, she started crying and absolutely didn't want to go in that direction. When I got closer, I saw my friend with her gun standing at the door. When I got to her, she snapped at me, yelling at me for opening the gate to the farm, leaving the front door open and leaving without my phone. I left it charging. After I calmed her down, I told her what happened and she asked why I left the door open. I told her that I didn't and that I double-checked that I had closed it so that Sky wouldn't go inside and that I didn't open the gates either. I just ran after Sky about 200 yards away from the house. The gates were a mile away and that it must have been the person Sky was chasing but it didn't make sense because they would have had to have run a mile in a minute at best. She said she got freaked out because she woke up hearing knocking somewhere. 
when she saw I wasn't in the guest room, she looked out the window to see if I was in the hammock. I was in there, so she walked to the front door to go outside. As soon as she looked at the front door and started to open it, the knocking stopped. It was coming from one of the windows around the side of the house. She was scared to go outside, so she was going to look at the cameras around the house. I was nowhere to be seen, and the gate was open. She got scared and concerned, thinking something had happened, so she got her gun to go look for me. That day, Skye slept inside with us, and we heard knocking and walking under roof all night. Again, for this next one, the year is unknown, but this takes place in Lewis and Clark National Historical Park in Oregon. A couple of years ago, before the COVID pandemic, my brother took a three-month job at Lewis and Clark National Historical Park in the Pacific Northwest. For everyone's info, if you're under a certain pay level, GS level, I think it's called, in the NPS, it's very common to bounce around to different parks every season. Once you're more experienced, you can apply for more permanent work. That's why he worked at five or six parks. Anyways, his job was to help plant trees in this area that were logged at one point. He was working with a small team, a couple of whom were experienced biologists who'd worked in the park for decades. One night after work, he asked kind of jokingly if they'd seen Bigfoot or Sasquatch in all their years working. They got kind of quiet and basically admitted that they had one weird experience. Two of his co-workers were doing field work on an old logging road in the back country of the park. The road ran parallel to a river. One day when they were driving along, they saw on the opposite side of the river what looked like, and I quote, a very tall man, head to toe in black, wearing what they thought was first a hoodie. Apparently upon seeing their car, this thing took off after them. What scared my brother's friend was they were going relatively fast in the car and this thing was running parallel to them across the river and was keeping up with them. It was jumping over logs and big rocks and moving like a human, not another animal. His friends don't like talking about it because it scared the crap out of them. These are very successful biologists in their field. I guess they don't want everyone to think they're nuts because they had a run-in with Bigfoot. That's going to be it for today, and I hope you all enjoy these encounter stories. Again, I would like to wish all my Canadian subscribers, viewers, and members a happy Thanksgiving weekend. Now, let's acknowledge the current OC members. I would like to thank Elizabeth, Jim, Diana and Teresa for their contribution and support as members of the OC community. Your support is truly appreciated. Join our exclusive YouTube membership program and unlock a trove of perks for just $2.99 per month. The perks grant you special access to emojis, membership badges and direct interaction with our members and myself by obtaining access to the OC Discord channel where you can join in on our weekly members chat, as well as early access to my content plus more. Don't miss out on the adventure. Become a member now and join us today. If these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had, then please forward them to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out and smash that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll stay up to date with all my latest uploads. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.